Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about the difference between chest, chest fry, and just regular vocal fry. Now, uh, today's video, we'll talk about the difference between these, uh, and I'm also going to go over some examples so you guys can kind of see what each is and how they all sound different. Because I know there's a lot of confusion between, oh, am I singing in chest voice? Or am I singing, you know, chest fry? Or is it just straight up vocal fry? Um, well, first off, let's go with the definitions. So chest is pure modal speaking singing voice. So for example, what I'm talking in right now, this is my chest voice. Um, it's also called your full voice, your modal voice, um, things along those lines. So your chest, for example, 99% of the time you're speaking in chest voice, um, your general singing voice is your chest voice or your modal voice, full voice, depending on what you want to call it. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to call it chest voice. Vocal fry. So what is a vocal fry? Vocal fry is basically the um, creaking, popping, low rattling sound um, in your voice. So when I talk like this, or you know, you wake up early in the morning and your voice is all low and grumbly and you know, it just sounds like this. That's vocal fry. There's a lot of misconceptions about vocal fry. A lot of people think, oh, it's really, really bad for me. You know, you shouldn't do it. It's gonna hurt your voice. You can get nodes. Um, you know, it doesn't sound good. There's a lot of, lot of misconceptions. Um, well, I'm here to kind of put a lot of those aside. Um, it's not a bad thing at all. Vocal fry is a very healthy, natural thing. Hell, you wouldn't wake up in the morning and your voice sound like that if it was a bad thing. You know, your voice wouldn't naturally sound that way. Overuse of it can be bad. And not necessarily physically bad, um, unless you go to the extreme with it, but just over time, overuse of it, you're gonna tire out your voice. You can lose some of your low and or high notes. Um, so you have to be careful with working with it, but it's a very useful register. So that brings up the next one what is uh, chest fry. So chest fry is basically, or chest fry mix, is basically a mix of your chest voice and your vocal fry. And so a lot of people have trouble identifying chest fry. You're still having the support and the heftiness, I guess, or fuller bodied sound, that resonant forward placement sound from your chest, your chest voice. You're adding the depth and the louder fullerness um, onto it. And so it is basically layered. It's not two notes, it's the same, it's one note, um, but it is a mix of your chest voice and your vocal fry. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, chest fry doesn't really exist, it's just all vocal fry. And I think that's wrong. Um, there are a lot of people out there who think that's wrong. When do you transition from chest into chest fry? Well, that one's pretty obvious. You can hear a difference. You can tell, you can, especially in slides or just doing straight up scales, um, you can hear a change and a difference between the two from once their voice naturally switches. And girls have these registers as well. So it's not purely, you know, just for guys. How can I tell the difference between uh, chest fry and vocal fry? It's gonna be different from everybody. You know, everyone's chest is different, everybody's chest fry, everybody's vocal fry. It's all going to be different. It's all going to be very subjective based on the person. Um, but 90% of the time, 80, 90% of the time, I would say you can still hear a difference because chest fry is way more supported, more musical, I guess, if you want to phrase it that way, the resonance and the support of a lower chest note. Um, but it has the depth and the kind of fullerness from that fry backing it up. Um, so now we're going to get into uh, some examples now that we've kind of discussed what pretty much are the basics of chest, chest fry, and vocal fry. All right guys, there's uh, one more thing I wanna go over um, is the actual mechanism, the science, the fundamentals behind um, chest versus chest fry versus vocal fry. So your chest voice, is used with your uh, your normal speaking vocal folds, 
vocal fry, pure vocal fry, is used with your false folds, um, which is the arytenoid muscles and cartilage around your, your true vocal folds. Now, chest fry uses both at the same time. When you're using chest fry, you can hear the harmonics in it. It'll buzz where you can hear multiple pitches, multiple harmonics in that. You'll hear the fundamental below, but you'll hear harmonics above because you're, you're activating both folds, your vocal folds and your false chords at the same time. Um, and as you transition, if you're sliding from chest into fry, you'll hear it go from your normal vocal folds into a mixing of both activated at the same time to dropping just being your false folds activated all right so as you guys can see i just have a little uh virtual piano pulled up on my ipad um so i can go over some notes with you guys for the purpose of this video we're gonna start um right around the usual bottom of the kind of baritone range um i'm a bass if you didn't already know that um my lowest day-to-day -day chest is usually a b1 b flat one with morning voice um, in the evenings, it's usually a C-sharp 2, C2, sometimes a D2 if I'm not really feeling well. Um, uh, my lowest ever was a G-sharp 1. Um, today, I think it's probably around a C-sharp 2, um, C2 maybe, we'll see. Uh, but I'm going to start on A2. We're going to do scales, just going straight down A2 to A1, um, and you'll hear the transition in my voice. Here's an A. And, uh, A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E, E flat, D, C, 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 C B. B flat, A. So you can hear that difference where I'm adding in that, that vocal fraud, but it still kind of has that support from my chest voice. All right, so this next part, I'm gonna do um, chest again into chest fry so you can hear that difference again. We're gonna go E2 um, down to probably E1, D1. Um, now for me, my daily chest fry usually ends around a D1. Um, with my record ever being an A0, pretty much at this point after D1, we'll just be straight fry and you'll tell it's going to lose the, um, kind of support and resonance of the chest, um, and purely be depth and kind of fullness of fry. E, E flat, D, C sharp. C, B, B flat, A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, e. We'll go A1 to A0, um, so you can really hear the difference. back down to B1 um, and then go up the two notes to D2 
so you can hear it again in chest fry what my d2 chest fry sounds like um and then i'll go back and switch back to chest and go up so here's the b1 b c d a d2 in chest d e f g a i guess that's just about it um i explained the difference between the three registers between vocal fry chest fry and chest sorry um and i showed you examples of all three registers um if you have any questions please comment below um let me know what you guys think